Hello and welcome back to PSD Touch Plus. My name is Martin Perhiniak and this is the Shortcut series. In this two-part episode, I am going to talk about making selections and saving them as pixel and vector masks. Combining the two type of masking, vector and pixel masks, is very powerful in cases when you have to combine strong or hard edge selections with soft edge selections where you have complicated edges like fur or hair. In this case, if we want to select this lion and put it in a different background, we will have quite a hard time to make this uh, selection properly because as you can see we won't be really able to use selections by color because almost everything around the lion is roughly the same color as the lion itself. So uh, selections by color won't work in this case or it will definitely won't be a final uh, version of the selection. It can be a rough selection but not a final selection. And then we also have this difficult part here uh, where we have the fur. Now, the best way to make a selection in this case is to combine vector selection, so a vector mask um, around the body of the lion, and then use pixel mask around the head part where we have the fur. I am going to show you this in two parts, so in this tutorial today we are going to do uh, the body and then in the next tutorial, the, the second part of this tutorial, we will concentrate on the head part. So you will see how to combine the two different type of masking and also at the same time see what's the advantage of each of these. First of all, what I would also do in this part is to create a mock-up. Because before we get to the final version of this selection, let me just show you a preview of the final version of this selection. And also a final version of the image plays into a new environment. So that would be this. And of course this is not final here, we still need some color corrections and uh, adjusting the shadow and some uh, details around the legs. And probably we also need some uh, footprints uh, on, the, on the sand to make this believable. But that's not the main, most important thing. We just want to have, uh, get the lion in this environment. Whenever you make a selection and whenever you decide to move something from an image into another image, which is a very standard basic procedure in Photoshop. For this type of work, you always have to first make a mock-up. Instead of starting to create a very delicate selection and spend maybe hours of doing it, and then moving uh, your selection into another image, you realize that it actually doesn't work because the perspective is not right, uh, the lighting is not right, and there can be so many issues that you have. And you can only see that if you create a mock-up of your final uh, montage, so the two images uh, put together. So let me show you that. I'm going to close these uh, images now and I am going to just simply open that image with the desert. So this is the image of what I would like to use. I am going to just crop it a little bit. I don't need the top bit and I would like to have it like this in a panoramic uh, format. And then I would like to have uh, the lion placed there just to check if this will work as a new background for the lion. Um, I chose this image because sometimes you want to uh, just get rid of some elements in the background because in this case again it's quite busy in the background. Of course we can always use cloning and get rid of the lion here just behind of this male lion or we can also get rid of this um, other lion here in the background quite easily by cloning it out. That's one way of uh, making the whole composition better but some cases you want to move the lion and use it in another composite and another montage and uh, for that reason we have to make the selection. So. Let's just use, first of all, the quick selection tool. And this is a great tool to create uh, mockups, uh, mockup selections, especially in something like this where we have uh, a quite difficult selection. This won't work, it won't make a perfect selection, of course, around the, the fur, it will make a nice job. And here as well, around the legs, we will have to uh, make some changes. We can try to select the tail as well. And then alt clicking, and holding down Alt while I'm drawing, or Option on uh, Mac, I can 
quickly uh, just get rid of some parts which we don't need in the selection this one here as well and roughly we have everything selected that we need then again just holding down alt in these cases I just get rid of some additional parts so this will be our mock-up selection and uh, we can use this to just simply move this into the other image if I go to window choose arrange and choose tile all vertically and we will see them side by side and with the move tool I can move this onto the other image now let's concentrate on that one I go again to view or sorry uh, window arrange consolidate all the tabs then I can concentrate on this image and now I can move the lion around of course as I said this is just a mock-up selection just to see how it works first of all what I can immediately see is that the colors are not right so we will have to add a bit more red colors to the lion in this environment and we also have to probably flip it around I mean flip the lion around or the environment because the lighting is not correct as you can see the lighting the in this uh, background scene comes from the right because of the shadows it's quite easy to tell and we will have to use the same on the lion and it's very easy to tell once again that the shadows on the right side here on the head of the lion so we if we flip the lion around like that now it's getting better for the lighting uh, situation uh, lighting conditions of the environment then we can start playing around with the size of the lion so we can always decide what size we want for the lion to be and we can start to add adjustments like color balance and make sure it's only adjusting the lion by uh, clip it the adjustment onto the lion's layer and then we can add a bit more reds and maybe a little bit more uh, magenta as well let's just see before and after yeah now it's getting more uh, similar to the environment colors and then of course maybe we need a little bit more uh, brightness on it as well so we can go back to adjustments choose levels again clip it onto the lion and make it a bit brighter just to increase uh, the lighting on the uh, I mean increase the highlights and so on and so forth we can play around with these values I don't want to spend too much time on this because this is the final result and it's uh, in this case less important because we have to first of all concentrate on the uh, selection I just wanted to see whether it works or not and I think this will work nice once we have a proper selection so you can see how useful it is to uh, make a mock-up selection and just check whether it's worth using an image uh, and spending time on making the selection or not and it, in this case I decide yes it will be good nice background and uh, we can adjust the colors quite easily and also the lighting sort of matches uh, the two images so let me just close this now and come back to my main image now as I said we are going to do two different types of selections to to make the final selection of this lion and the first one will be vector based because of the body of the lion is hard edge it has hard edges almost all around here even on the tail it's not that furry so it's quite easy to select and uh, most of the parts around the lion can be selected quite easily uh, with the pen tool apart from of course uh, the neck and the head where we have all these furry bits now those parts will be selected separately with a pixel mask using other types of selections most of the time in Photoshop whenever you make selections especially when you have a, a complicated situation you have to combine selection tools and even combine masking techniques so I am going to start using the pen tool set to path mode and I have a feature turned on called rubber band which is very useful to have it on because that helps us to draw uh, much much easier to draw with this um, uh, the paths and I am going to start making my selection here now if you don't uh, if you're not familiar with the pen tool how to work with it all you need to do basically is just clicking to add straight lines and click and drag to create curves and once you have a curve the next part curves uh, or path segment will be also a curve so you will have to uh, follow 
the handles that you create with a curve. These are the handles. Like here now, I again, I'm going to follow it and click and drag and try to follow the curve. Especially on curvy bits like these, the pen tool is very powerful because we can uh, cover long uh, parts of our curve or our the edges of our selection. So you can see I managed to cover this with a couple of anchor points. So it was quite effective, um, this technique. And I am going to just simply continue doing the same thing, going around, and uh, then we can close this path. So I won't show the whole uh, selection. It probably take me another couple of minutes to go around it. But uh, let me jump forward in time and show you how I would finish this path. So this is how my finished path looks like. As you can see, I've followed along all the edges. And now I'm ready to turn this into a vector mask. You can see around the head, I didn't follow the edges because it would have been a nightmare to do this with the pen tool. So I just stick to the part, the body part, which I can turn into a vector mask. So I have the path selected with the path selection tool and I go to layer menu, but for some reason the vector mask option is not available. The reason for that is because we have a background layer and we can't create a vector mask on a background layer. First of all, we need to turn this into a normal layer. So let me double click on the name of it, click on OK, and now it's a normal layer. And now we can go to layer, vector mask and choose current path. Once we created the vector mask, we can already see that everything else around this path is uh, now, it's gone, it became transparent. But if we want to see it properly, uh, we can create a new layer by command clicking on the new layer icon and fill that in with black. Or backspace to fill in uh, something with your foreground color. Now, if you want to, um, see the details, you can always zoom closer. And the huge advantage of a vector mask is that we can always adjust it. I use the direct selection tool and just zoom really close. And you can see I can always adjust my uh, selection. And when I click away, I can see it without the path itself. If I decide to move this one also a bit closer, I can do that quite easily and just adjust details that I think doesn't look right. Okay, so like, for example, here, if it's a bit too sharp, this edge, even though it was like that in the original, I can always adjust it. Or if I zoom closer to the top bit here, you can again check, yeah, there's a bit of a problem there. From the original background, we can see some details. So let me just reduce that a bit and uh, see less from that. Okay, maybe there as well on the left. So I am just using the anchor points that I created to adjust them. And uh, once again, I don't want to have two sharp uh, corners on the back of the lion, There's something like that. Um, so it's very easy to adjust and uh, work with the vector mask. And the big advantage of the vector mask is that it's completely resolution independent. So even if, when we start resizing the image, the uh, quality of the mask will never degrade. So that's a really useful uh, option about vector masks. So now we are ready with the body and it looks good. Obviously the legs or the foot of the lion, the feet, uh, had to be selected like this because if I shift click on the mask, you can see uh, the lion is standing in the um, uh, sand and that's why we have a bit of a problem there, but we will sort that out later. So for now, I am going to just leave it like this and we will have to work on that later and decide what to do with the invisible parts of the body of the lion. So we have the first part selected, the body, and now we are ready to continue uh, creating um, the selection around the head. So we are going to continue from this point on in the next tutorial, and we are going to try to make a selection around the head. Thanks a lot for your attention today and see you next time.